Hi guys, it is just another cold, yuck, miserable day. I guess miserable evening now here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Where we have slogged somehow into a uh, Thursday night, December 8th, 2022. And so, uh, as I was saying, some of you have probably figured out that I have some extra time carved out in my life on YouTube. <clears throat> and just with it getting dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. So for the time being, you guys are so lucky. Uh, now that I have stumbled into the bottomless wellspring of doom and gloom at medium.com, I, I feel like I have just opened the door to a, just, just an entirely different level of doom and gloom than I ever knew uh, existed over at medium.com where you could spend eight hours a day I'm assuming for the next year, uh, just trying to catch up with all of the stories about collapse and doom and the whole bit. Um, so anyway, I am um, enjoying getting to know all of these different writers, you know, other than Umer Hack. Uh, never heard of them, and, and when I find one of these, well, usually guys, I will try to share uh, with you, and then you can take it from here. So one of the fellows I have discovered, and he might be the second most prolific doomer on Medium.com. This is a fellow, again, never heard of this man. Never heard of this man uh, until the last week. Uh, his name is Mike Meyer. That is M-E-Y-E-R if you're trying to find him on, uh, on medium.com. Mike, it sounds like he, it looks like he's about my age. Uh, apparently lives in Honolulu, Hawaii. And good, on, and good for Mike, he is up to 12.4 thousand followers. So he's not quite 10% of the way to Umer Hack, but he's gaining. And Mike describes himself as an educator, a CIO, a retired entrepreneur, a grandfather with occasional fits of humor in the midst of disaster. So some of his uh, essays are more on the, hum you know, darkly ironic, humorous side. And a lot of them are just straightforward explanations for anybody trying to understand what is going on on this planet. Uh, this man can explain it as good as well as anyone. Here is a partial list of some of the essays you will find on medium.com by Mike Meyer. And, and, and I could pick any one of these. Running out of lies, removing paradigmatic stupidity, re rethinking the world for survival. Of course, the question on everyone's mind, what do we do now? Here is the death of political illusions. We have the United States of denial followed by the nation states of denial. You know, the United States of denial talking about this country and then the follow-up essay, you know, all of the other nation states of denial. How about assholes and idiots are killing us. Yep, yep. Uh, here is dealing with hyper-converged disasters. How about surrendering to dysfunctionality? We have our universe is badly out of sync. 
here is a question we all should be asking ourselves. Knowing what is no longer needed, things to get out of your life, there is the burden of failed systems. Don't forget the reality gap. There is the old paradigm eats its own. Then we have another two-part. We have the gradual apocalypse followed by shocks in the gradual apocalypse. Here is death by unsustainable lifestyle. <coughs> this one I might need to check in in the future. We are not going to hell fast enough. Yes, our delusions are killing us. It would be easier if everything went to hell faster. Yep. There is don't listen to the losers. Here is one we, we have all felt as doomers. I'm not up to this. I fear that none of us are up to what we are facing. Yep. Here is, oh, this could be a good one. Beyond the ironic apocalypse, the nation of the living dead. Here is everything is terrible, but I'm fine, asterisks. What about we have few options left? I would say no options left. How about calling out evil people? Yes. But we're going, I think, again, I just threw a dart. The one that my dart landed on is, can we tame the dragon? Can we tame the dragon? I, again, guys, I could have picked any one of these. I just landed, uh, and it goes on from there. I'm, I'm halfway down, okay? Uh, but we landed on Can We Tame the Dragon by Mike Meyer. He's going to answer the question, Can we tame the dragon? We must learn to live in the world we have created. <clears throat> the insanity that is overwhelming us is understandable and predictable, but it is also only part of what is happening. A collapsing global paradigm on a planet with the technology we have is a metamorphic transformation. There is no escape, but so many different things happen that confusion becomes the greatest recognized threat I used to have a buddy, Moses, his, uh, what he would always say about stuff like this, talking about the New World Order confused, you know, the New World Order talking about us peons, confuse them till they die. That it is uh, to keep us in a constant state of confusion, of fear, of uh, fighting with each other, confuse them till they die. You can be angry because of confusion, but it is hard to be angry at confusion. So people substitute their favorite scapegoats. We blame people, not our confusion in these situations. Those are substitutes for problems that we cannot or refuse to acknowledge. Global warming has not been slowed, let alone stopped. Atmospheric carbon continues to climb with no change. Wars and refugees are expanding as people attempt to find a safe place to live. The refugees are products of the climate disaster, as are the wars. This may be caused directly or indirectly 
but it is already too entangled to tell. Yet, people will ignore the big reason in favor of blaming someone while the scientific community and the larger literate population can see no hope of avoiding this catastrophe, the more fearful and easily manipulated are subject to criminal opportunists looking for money and power. These opportunists play the same game as people dealing with confusion. Confusion is too vague a cause. People want someone to blame who can be someone to hate for their loss of certainty and security. For the, for the majority of us, I would say, is what, is what he uh, meant to say, for the majority of us doomers is what I think he meant. But anyway, but for the majority who see reality darkening and confusion spreading at the hands of the manipulators, the hope of avoiding the catastrophe is already gone. However, we can still work to ride the dragon, to ride the dragon with the uh, with the uh, uh, hope of taming it. But, unfortunately, that is just another cause for widespread denial. Dragons are dangerous to ride, and many will die, and the suffering will increase year by year, but that is now our burden to tame the climate monster by learning to live with it. Many people refuse to believe that the world we had before is gone. But unfortunately, that delays desperately needed action that plays into the hands of the manipulators. This is the classic con, as the victims desperately want to believe that what is lost can quickly be restored, so they buy into an absurd illusion until the illusion collapses around them. And uh, we're seeing it with crypto going on, and we're really going to see it with the uh, bright green lies, with the green energy revolution. Uh, is going to be the defining uh, example of what he's talking about. Uh, victims desperately wanting to believe that what is lost can quickly be restored, so they buy into an absurd illusion. Can you say the bright green lies until the illusion collapses around them, which will be completely obvious to anyone what a lie that was, uh, certainly in the next uh, 20 years. We are now at the cusp of an inflection point as our political and economic systems fail. The flat refusal to see this is both a symptom and part of the collapse. All existing systems are now models of failure as they all demand continuous growth and unrealistic outcomes that exacerbate the disaster already upon us. Things will fail to get better, but, of course, they have been failing to get better for some decades now. However, in the wealthiest parts of the planet, most people could still see it as a net gain for them and their families and communities, even if they must squint their eyes 
and selectively forget the world of their childhood, the realization is dawning that something fundamental is wrong because things keep breaking and are never fully restored. But unfortunately, the supply chain is still the current scapegoat brought on by the pandemic. As I've said in the past, the supply chain is a problem, but the reasons are far more extensive than most people realize. We move from one seemingly unrelated storage to the next, shortage to the next. For example, the infant formula shortage that you know of earlier this year, the infant formula shortage was, di was directly the result of one single factory shutdown. But how did a single factory become capable of causing a dangerous lack? It results from stress on a massively deformed planetary economy dedicated to greed and not well-being, the American capitalist system is on life support based on financialization. As a result, there is steadily declining investment and production in favor of creating artificial profits in financial entities. As a result, little gets produced despite trillions in dollars funneled directly into the private sector. Vast profits must be shown so they are manufactured with funding from governmental financial finance systems via the great securities houses that own most of the stock market. These are all too big to fail. Fixing one factory in one product area will fix only one of many failures exacerbated by climate disasters and related wars. Moreover, it will do nothing to correct decades of evolving structural failures in the planet's dominant economic system, even as the system collapses in relatively slow motion. But that is not the point here. Everything that nation states and international organiza and organizations can do in trade, technology, and economics may affect. Things may get better for a while in some places and then worse in others, but the solutions will be short-lived. I expect the supply chain explanation for shortages and inflation is about to wear itself out. The media will find a new process to identify the cause of expanding failures. In the larger context, problems will only evolve and worsen. The opportunists, crackpots, deniers of reality, and religionists will grow as failures merge from individual events into chronic supply, hunger, and inflation problems. People will become angrier at the time wasted and increasing deprivation. In America and the other nations locked together in the heart of the old paradigm, violence and dysfunction will dominate. The explosion of irrationality and mass murder in America is growing. <coughs> mass killings in America are already so great that it is impossible to, impossible to remember last week's body count. There is no longer a pretense of doing something to slow the slaughter. 
the little efforts to limit the military weapons flooding the streets of America are expected to be gutted by the openly dis disrupt uh, destructive Supreme Court. For the mass population of families below $150,000 per year in income, costs and shortages are becoming frightening. But after all, what can be done? But this is not everyone and everywhere where wealth is available and the population is more educated, it is still hard to visualize what is happening among the people most severely affected. That adds to the confusion. This is all crazy and can't be happening. Someone is making this up. I don't see things happening here or worse, these things I don't see these things happening here, or worse, these things must be stopped, and the people causing them must be removed, whatever that means. It will continue to grow until the majority, even a thin majority, manages to take control of the tools being used to incite more confusion and violence. But can we manage our societies, or will any who attempt to take control to be identified as infected and exacerbate the disease? The instinctive human desire for a chief to save us inevitably fails. The only thing that can work is a broad and open democratic movement based on our current communication technology. We need to learn to trust ourselves, but not in small groups. We also need to know to trust our technology that can be set to prevent stupidity. Good luck on that. Technology to prevent stupidity. Virtually every technology I know of is increasing our stupidity. We are that far down. First, we must stop stupid people from having control. That will happen in some places, but with their greed and bigotry, America and the old ruling states will not survive. Parts of them may evolve into educated democratic metropoles, but most will not. It is time to face this. Efforts to salvage what was and bring things back to some point in the past are a waste and will hasten decline and collapse. No. <laughs> anyway, that was a mouthful, Mike Myers, and uh, good luck on getting these stupid people out of, uh, out of office. But, uh, you know, reading this, reading this when uh, Herschel Walker <laughs> It, it, it lost the, you know, I, I'm a little bit sorry that Herschel Walker uh, lost. Uh, I, I mean, it, it was a bad night for late night TV comedians when Herschel Walker uh, lost the Senate race. Imagine Senator Herschel Walker being uh, one of the most powerful politicians on the planet. Uh, but, you know, as a few people were pointing out, you know, with all of this uh, laughing and whatnot about Herschel Walker's campaign, the fact that it even went as far as it did 
should be a clarion call, not just to the Democrats, uh, how far they've fallen, uh, even though they, you know, barely won the Senate. But I mean, it should be a clarion call to anybody with a brain, uh, looking at, at, at how close Herschel Walker came to becoming a U.S. Senator. Anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap this up because that is two Chronicles of the Collapse and I'm going to go distract them after spending all day at medium.com. I think I'll go over there to Netflix and cheer myself up with some uh, mass murder du jour. Bye, guys.